Uh, Prof, thank you so much for joining us. So one in 10 adults globally, uh, that's over half a billion people uh, living with diabetes. In Africa, prevalence is somewhat lower, but South Africa is actually worse than the average globally. One in nine people affected adults in South Africa. Why is it so bad in South Africa? Uh, thank you, uh, Sally, and thank you uh, to the viewers uh, for joining in. I, I think I need to give you a perspective of Africa and then speak to uh, South Africa. Uh, it is really alarming that uh, up until about the 1980s, uh, there were, diabetes was considered rare uh, on the continent. And yet, over the past 30 years or so, the uh, uh, burden of diabetes has uh, increased dramatically. And uh, this, no doubt, uh, is related to the what we call epidemiological transition. In other words, uh, increasing um, lifespan, uh, change in lifestyle, uh, dietary habits, and physical exercise, as well as uh, economic uh, changes. Largely fueled, as uh, you can imagine, by the uh, massive rates of uh, urbanization. And uh, if you look at uh, prior to the 1950s, only about 5% uh, of the population in Africa was uh, urban. And then by 2018, 45% uh, are urban. And by 2033, it's estimated or it's projected that what is called the demographic inflection point will be reached. In other words, there would be more urban than in rural, than rural um, populations. In South Africa, we have already uh, passed that uh, so-called inflection point. Uh, we have more than 60% of our population that uh, is urbanized. And um, if you look at the uh, estimates for, for, uh, for the world from the IDF uh, Atlas, for Africa, uh, just remember that uh, Africa has one of the fastest rates of urbanization. Mm. It also has about 70% of the United Nations defined least developed countries. And until recently, the healthcare agenda in all the countries was dominated by poverty and infectious diseases. And uh, it is, uh, it's only been since 2011 that non-communicable diseases like diabetes have attracted the attention of the United Nations uh, with, the result, uh, with the resulting resolution yeah. on uh, preventing uh, uh, such diseases. I and mean, in Africa, <laughs> yes? I know, I was just going to say that what, what is astonishing about the stats is that 6.7 million deaths were caused by diabetes globally. Uh, I think it was this year. I'm just wondering why there's so many deaths when there is treatment available. That's because a lot of the diabetes in the world is contributed to by the number of people with diabetes in low and middle income countries where access to health care is not available so people remain largely undiagnosed and if you look at Africa um, more than 50 percent that's 12.7 million of the 24 million currently are undiagnosed. In other words, more than one in two are undiagnosed. Yeah. And uh, the deaths in Africa has been about 416,000. Uh, South Africa, of course, has the highest prevalence, largely due to the fact that uh, uh, you know we are the most urbanized uh, on the continent, and uh, we have access to um, unhealthy foods. The lifestyle has changed sure. because of urbanization. Exercise has just basically gone to zero for many. And so diabetes is, in fact, um, a condition that we can prevent. Uh, we can prevent by population level strategies to improve uh, exercise yeah. and change uh, uh, dietary habits. And I guess it's because um, there are just no quick fixes. You just have to do the right thing. You have to eat properly, consistently properly. You have to exercise. I'm wondering how things have worsened due to the pandemic. We know that a lot of diseases were sort of uh, ignored during uh, the worst of the pandemic where everyone was so concerned about deaths. What has the pandemic done to treating and preventing diabetes in South Africa? So in South Africa, basically, the problem is that a lot of the people with diabetes didn't uh, attend 
the usual chronic care uh, clinic visits and uh, so their diabetes probably worsened but like in other parts of the world uh, the uh, likelihood of hospitalization is about 1.7 times higher in people with diabetes than without diabetes and remember a lot of these people have other what we call comorbidities yeah. like hypertension and kidney disease and heart disease so they are most more likely to be hospitalized because uh, of those concomitant uh, uh, problems and it's also found that people with diabetes are about uh, two and a half times more likely to die uh, than people without diabetes that have been admitted to hospital and I think this holds true even for, for South yeah. Africa but to note that the largest numbers have been found in high-income countries. So the impact of uh, uh, diabetes on COVID is related to the background burden of diabetes in that particular uh, country. Is there, so the most of the Professor, sorry to jump in. Uh, is there enough focus on getting diabetes under control? Because what I'm hearing you explain is a picture of a disease that's entirely preventable, uh, certainly type 2, um, spiraling out of control and becoming a massive burden on an already very burdened health system. Are there enough interventions in place? No, I don't think there's enough interventions. And until there's population level strategies, firstly to prevent, uh, secondly to uh, have access to facilities that would be able to screen for diabetes yeah. and then once they are diagnosed to actually ensure that they have access to health care. Now uh, we are fortunate in South Africa unlike the rest of Africa where health care to all is free. So uh, insulin and uh, oral medications for diabetes, uh, you know, testing facilities are available. The problem is the wide urban-rural divide. So in the rural areas, uh, there may not be a need or um, perception that there's a need to, to, to be screened, so they are not diagnosed. And to give you an example, in our rural study done about 15 years ago, uh, only about 15% uh, were known to have diabetes. The last, large majority were undiagnosed. Wow. By contrast, in the urban areas, uh, over 60% are known to have diabetes. Absolutely so fascinating. It is, it is fascinating, Professor. I, I never uh, thought about diabetes in an urban uh, and a rural way, but you've certainly pointed to some fascinating things there. Professor Aisha Mortala, thank you so much, Head of UKZN's Department of Diabetes and Endocrinology.